The following is a presentation of TFNN. Mindful Living with Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien Namaste and welcome to Mindful Living everybody it's Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien and we have a mission to share information and all kinds of health tips that will help you get healthy feel good and live life to the fullest every single day Thank you so much to all our listeners to tuning in every Wednesday with us. And today we're going to be talking about mindfulness for children. So we'll be talking about how to be more present with our children, some examples we can set for them, some tools we can use to help them stay calm and, you know, life tools that they can use throughout their life to help manage their emotions and not throw those temper tantrums that we kind of... <laughs> hope that we can teach them not to do, that'll improve their focus. And then we're going to be talking about children's yoga as well, what's appropriate for children. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, the benefits they get from yoga as well as some of the cautions that we should heed. So it's an exciting show. And I'm so happy to be here sitting next to you, Tom. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It's good to see you. It's very good to see and you. And you've been so busy. Yeah, and you have too. You yeah, know. But you get, a, you get a new book too. I do have a new you book. You should see this book, folks. Look at this. <laughs> this is a beautiful book. So tell me about this book. Well, I just got them yesterday. This is my new children's book. Right. And um, it's called Garuda, the Eagle Who Soared with Ahimsa. Now, it is uh, based on yoga lessons that, you know, yoga teaches us and how to be better people. Right. And, um, and, but I, it is really universal. It's a message that you can teach to any child. So whether or not your child is into yoga or whether or not you're interested in yoga, uh, Ahimsa means non-harming. So the story is about an eagle who would normally be quite vicious and sure. eat other animals. Right. Who chooses to practice ahimsa, non-harming, toward other animals. And go he goes out in search of friends. And so the um, story is about how the eagle makes new friends. It um, helps dispel uh, sort of pre preconceived notions based on Which image. Which most of us have. Yes, true. Right. Um, to not judge a book by its cover, yeah. because the eagle that the, all these animals are usually very fearful of and want to run away from just wants to be their friend. It's a so, really fun book. Thank you so much. It has been such a labor of love. I've enjoyed every single minute of it. The um, story actually came out of my teaching yoga with children. Okay. So um, I started teaching yoga at my children's school when they were four and five. Yes. And actually three and four. So I started when they were three and four and then continued into the And she has pictures school. of her children in the book doing yoga poses. The folks. yoga poses. The story can actually be acted out in a yoga class. So actually right. that's where the story was born. And it's just been so much fun. It's, you know, actually I'll be filming the class that goes along with the book in the next couple weeks. So that'll be available with purchase of the book as well. And so, how do they purchase the book? On my website, okay. AllieFord.com. Yeah. Yes, right now I'm taking pre-orders. You can email me at Allie at AllieFord.com. And folks, the color is beautiful. Thank the characters you. are beautiful. And I was lucky enough to see this about a year and a half ago, probably, Yeah, right? yeah, when I started working so on it. So this really came in, though. This is... And you know, there's some, isn't there something about children's books? Just in general, like holding the deal. Yeah. The cowl is the whole bit. It's so fun. They're fun. And, you know, for it, this has been a big learning lesson. It, oh, a sure. year and a half it's ago, tough. I started working it's on tough, this. Right? And the story was right. created even before that. So right. if you have a dream, if our listeners right. have a dream to get something done, you know, write it down and be persistent. I, I really thought this is something I could knock out in months, a matter of months. Yeah. And, you know, it, it takes some time. I love the artwork. The, art, the artist I found, he used to live here in he's, Tampa. He's amazing. There's, no, there's no doubt. Eduardo McCarty. Yeah. He's since moved to Seattle, and he is so talented. And I just gave him a little direction. You know, I said, I, I, at first of all, I saw his website. His images are really whimsical, and he right. uses fun color. This is right. a watercolor treatment. 
um, that the animals are all based on my favorite animals who've sort of been part of my life. So the eagle happens to be my favorite bird, the bald eagle. How can it not be? Exactly. Right? Beautiful, majestic creature. And then the animals he, he meets along the way, there is a cat that's based on my neighbor's adorable, most friendly calico cat. Now, this, oh, that's a riot. It's funny, I've never been a cat person, only yeah. because my brother was deathly allergic growing up. So we weren't allowed to have cats. So it was more of a, an ignorant thing. I didn't really know anything about cats. I love it. Well, my neighbor's cat, her name is Calico. Okay. She she comes when I call her. Like first when she sees me, yeah. She she meows and it's adorable. Like she's calling me. Right. So then I say, Calico, come on, Calico, and she checks both ways before she crosses the street. They're so freaking smart. Isn't that true? I have no idea. And then she trots over and purrs so loudly and just wants to snuggle. And I feel like I can have a full on conversation with this cat. Adorable. So that's the cat. And then of course there's a cow. Look at this picture of the cat, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That is a great picture. Super cute. Um, the cow is modeled after the Texas Longhorn. Okay. The reason and of for course that, you're from Texas. That's right. I'm from they... Texas. I went to the University of Texas, so that's okay. my alma mater. And uh, love, if you have ever seen a Longhorn cow in nature, they are so amazing. They are. They're so gentle. Yeah. They're quiet, gentle, loving creatures. Are they? A long but they've got these cow. huge yeah. sort of seemingly threatening horns, and when okay. they turn their head, you just have to watch out. They're not doing it to hurt you. Right. You just have to make sure you don't get, you know, okay. accidentally whacked by one of these things. And then the eagle meets um, a dog yeah. who is just probably my most favorite animal in yeah, the book. Yeah, he's cool. Named, or sorry, Image is um, really a replication of my dog, uh, who I had for 12 years. Her oh, name cool. was Sam, and she was a Border Collie. And let me tell you, have you ever known a Border Collie? Yes. I knew this dog from a friend of mine when I lived in Austin, Texas, and they're so smart. I mean, they're, yes, they're. literally ranked right. number one in terms of intelligence of all breeds. Okay. And um, I never trained her. She walked with me everywhere in Austin and San Francisco off leash. She waited for me outside of stores while I shopped. Would not leave with anyone. Wouldn't leave that. She carry all the packages. She well, I didn't train her to, to go. <laughs> she did go hiking with me, but that's the thing. She was finicky. When I put anything around her neck, she wanted it off. Oh, that's funny. Um, so smart, man. But yeah, my, my heart, my that favorite is so dog. Cool. And then the snake is a cobra, and that represents my, they're really popular in India. Okay. And uh, that oh, represents yeah. my studying in India. So it's a fun book, like I said. I love to have it out there. And It's, uh, a, great, it's a great lesson, too. Thank you. It's a you. huge lesson. Thank you. I think so, too. It's been really fun, you know. And my children, I mean, right now they're six and eight, but when I started creating this book, like I said, they, it was around four and five. They really help me with creating the message so that children can understand it. Right. So it's been really fun. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. That's huge. Thank you. I'm excited we got it out there. Oh, you got to be. So, today, the yoga world, speaking of yoga, lost one of our yoga greats, uh, BKS Iyengar, who is one of the most important yoga gurus of current day, died today. And um, this man was so important because he spread the message of yoga to millions of people. Yes. And inspired so many people to get on their yoga mat, not only to get on it, but those really, really big teachers who now teach Iyengar yoga. And um, I started thinking about this today, you know, how important it is when we talk about living life to the fullest, right. which we open every show with, right. to surround ourselves with people who inspire us. It's one way that we can live life to the fullest. Right. So who, who inspires you? Do you have sort of a couple people who pop into your mind? I... What happens is this, it, it, you know, when we were talking about this a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. it's an interesting question in the context, okay, growing up, was it one inspiration after another? And, and what it was growing up, I, I, I'd gaze, you know, just people in general, mm -hmm. and I'd say, oh, I like that, I like that, and I like that. Yeah. Meaning, and, and that would be what I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And so... You really got me thinking the last 20 minutes about that, <laughs> meaning, because I could turn around and say, you inspire me, Bridget inspires me, Charles Lloyd inspires me. And then what I realized, right, mm -hmm. it's when I look at people, it's the qualities yes. that I'm grabbing out of people. I'm stealing right. them. Not, yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's really interesting because I start thinking, I said, oh, my God. What, what I realized is that there's 
a lot of different people that have a lot of different qualities. They say, oh, I really like that. And it's not that there's something else that you don't like about it, but it's, it's grabbing that and saying, okay, what is that? Yeah. I want to know what that is. Yeah. You know, and so you inspire towards that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's truthfulness, it's, it's tenacity, it's soulfulness, it's spiritualness, mm -hmm. it's being real, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and you see different people and how they can relate to that. And, and well, no, how they present it. And you know when you're looking at someone, just like you were saying, I guess, you're looking at her eyes and you're saying, she really looks like that. Yeah. Those eyes really come out. They like, sparkle. And, and, and that's what you see. Yeah, you know? definitely. And, and so that's what, you know, will give me the shivers. And me too, just that that saying that, that right That now. it's like, okay, that's what inspires me. Yeah. You know, so, and it's really neat. I really like it when someone I don't know, and I know they're delivering something. It's like, oh, okay, man, you know, I want that. I want to aspire to that. Yeah. You know, it's you know? so beautiful that you said that. And thinking about this today, it, anybody can be inspiring. Everybody yeah. can be inspiring. No. There's it, no doubt. It really comes down to just opening our eyes to the people in our life and finding something that inspires us, you know? Right. It can be, I thought about my children, they inspire me every single day to be a better person, you right. know, to be a better mom, to make better choices, to set a better example. Then I thought about my yoga students who inspire me to be a more dedicated yoga practitioner right. and teacher and to continue right. to learn and grow right. and study and improve my knowledge or deepen my knowledge and understanding. I thought about my parents right. who I love so dearly and as we're all aging together it inspired me to cherish each and every single quickly passing moment yeah. you know that because time's the only thing you can't get back it's exactly right that's that's, that's a big number. And my brother my husband inspires me to to be more loving every day that you know everybody around us and, and and it does it just comes down to opening your eyes and being present it does and just paying attention and seeing you know what you just described is, is something, it's a skill, I think, you know, or get kind of getting out of your own way to see what you see in people. Because we have so many preconceived notions, or we judge people, or we define people as X, Y, Z. Right. And ultimately, everybody's beautiful. Everybody's got that there, light inside. There's no doubt. And you know what I found? This is, there was a light bulb that went off my head, uh, you know, not a long time ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago. And what it was is that the, even when... And I think I was having an argument with someone. And what ended up happening is that the argument, their point of view was just so cool. And it didn't even matter. I realized then, I said, man, this is really dynamite. That I still didn't agree with it. But it was dynamite because of the energy that was in it. And it was real. Wow. Yeah. Now that, just let's pause and think about that. that when, if we could, that's a different level of a realized, enlightened person. That you can have... A disagreement in a very respectful way, right? Yeah, and, no, and actually, even respect the other person's opinion. Oh no, I, I listen. I thought it was amazing. I, yeah. Not and the guy says, "Man, I says, you know, because it's all perception. We know. I mean, you know, perception. Okay, you gotta hear this, folks. Before we get on, Allie's saying we're talking about healthy. And she's telling me that she has handles. It's like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Give me a break. This, they're the, summer handles, yeah, all right? Yeah, You've yeah, had a lot of right. fun this summer. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Anyway, but but it's, it was perception. And, and yeah. in, the, in the context of that, it was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that was a lesson to me that you really better pay attention even when you don't, you know, if you think something opposite. Yeah. I agree that, you know, just to, to re respect other people and... Gosh, what a big lesson. I mean, that you could have an argument or even be different from someone and just allow them to be different. You know, what, what's it hurting for someone to have a different opinion? I mean, that's, you know, not black or white necessarily in some cases. But talk about inspiring. I did post on Instagram today a photo of me and Sweet Hermit downstairs, our security guard. Oh, isn't that cool? Man, okay. He's this inspiring. Guy, inspiring. This, now, what I posted on Instagram was... Usually we leave the show. It's seven o'clock. Yes. You know, I I tend to get in a hurry or just kind of beeline it for my car to get home and see my family. But when you look at Herman, you, you, this is someone that you might just choose to pass by. He's a security guard downstairs. You know, do I need to take some time to say hello? But you yeah. look at his eyes. Right. 
He's smiling and his eyes are shining. Do you, you know how old he is? No. How we old just is we he? just had his 85th birthday. Oh, he is downstairs, so gorgeous. downstairs, folks. This guy's amazing. He's 80, amazing. 85 years old. It's so freaking cool because going in, I'm looking and saying, Yeah, it's me. I want to be that. Totally. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back with more mindful living. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. No matter where where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? Mindful Living with Allie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Ryan. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before. No, no, I get a good feeling, yeah. Welcome back to Mindful Living, everybody. We're welcoming a guest, and I have to say, I am so excited, thrilled, and honored to welcome this guest to the show. Her name is Lindsay Baumstein. She's a life coach who holds a Master's of Art degree in Transpersonal Psychology from Sophia University. She incorporates mindfulness practices and creative expression in sessions with her clients. She's worked with hospice as a coordinator of their volunteer program and has taught yoga to both children and adults. And very beautifully, I might add. Lindsay is entirely creative. She loves to write, which is expressed on her blog. You can find at www.sitandsmile.com. And folks, I encourage you to go there and read her blog posts. They are so hilarious and so meaningful and moving. And uh, she loves to be outside with her husband and two beautiful children in Tampa, Florida. Lindsay, welcome to the show. Thank you, Allie Ford. It's good to be here. Oh, it's so good to talk to you. How are you doing? 
I am great. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with us and wisdom. And you actually had written a blog that I so enjoyed reading about mindfulness with children. So I'm so mm -hmm. happy you're joining us to give us um, your tips and ideas for creatively introducing mindfulness practices to our children. But before we get to that, I just have a, a quick question or a note of clarity for you. Would you mm -hmm. explain what transpersonal psychology is, please? Absolutely. Transpersonal psychology is a school of psychology that focuses on spirituality mm -hmm. as well as human growth. So it's based more on a wellness model as opposed to a pathological model. Um, it's closely related to positive psychology. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about what makes us tick, what lights us up, uh, what makes us strive and reach for goals that make ourselves and this world a better place. I love that. It, you know, you actually wrote a blog similar to this that said, it was entitled The 10 Questions You Should Ask Yourself Every Day. Yes. And a lot of what you just said is there. What makes you excited? What do you love about yourself? And right. it gets you thinking about those deeper questions. It makes a lot right. of sense to treat the, yeah. you know, the whole person and get to what makes us well and feel good and to reproduce those conditions in our life. Exactly. Focusing on our strengths yeah. and looking at the things in our lives that work. Yeah. And how we can, you know, continue along that path and not just focusing on what's broken and what needs to be fixed, but what, what's working and, you know, what lights us up, what gives us passion, what makes us happy and joyful, because that will continue to bring more joy into our lives, into the world. And as you know, happiness makes us healthier. True. You know, it's interesting, Lindsay, is that mm -hmm. the, have you found, sometimes I try to figure out when people do certain things, it seems like mm -hmm. a lot of people do certain things and they know they're not going to be happy. It's like, why are you doing it? And I, I have a hard time. I, I, I mean, I don't battle with it. But when I look at it, I say to myself, what, are they crazy? Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. and I know they're not because right. there's so many people that do it. And it's like, okay, why? Mm -hmm. You know, why yeah. is that in society? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, it's a good point. And I think a lot of times we do things because we feel like we should. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to step back and really question, well, what is that about? Right. Why do we feel like we should be doing something that doesn't bring us joy? Are we afraid of disappointing someone else? Um, so it's important to kind of examine that. And I think a lot of that ties into the mindfulness practice because we want to try and make decisions that are conscious exactly. and not just habitual. You know, not just decisions that we're making because we're reacting to a situation, but because we're mindfully responding mm -hmm. to a situation. Exactly. So in your, in your own words, how mm -hmm. would you further define or more specifically define what mindfulness is? Mm, good question. Um, I kind of look at mindfulness as, you know, a big umbrella. And underneath that umbrella is um, things like learning how to stay present, learning how to bring a soft awareness to the present moment. And the thing I love about mindfulness is that there's, there's no judgment. Um, and it's important to remember that it is a practice. Mm -hmm. And um, I am not an expert by any means on mindfulness, but it is something that I try and practice. Right. Um, and it's, it's really about bringing this gentle awareness to the moment. Yeah. Um, it's also about learning how to identify your thoughts and feelings and knowing that they don't define you. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a really important thing for children to learn um and for all of us really but that you know if we have a thought that oh my god i just did a terrible job right um you know i failed i'm i'm bad rather than internalizing that you can say okay that was a thought i'm bad but i am not bad right i am compassionate and loving and whole just for who i am mm -hmm. and this passing thought is just a passing thought so i'm going to label that as a thought and I'm going to come back to the present moment. Right. So it's a way to not let, you know, your thoughts 
get a hold of you. Yeah, and that's if what that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, and I think it's very mm -hmm. helpful to to then refer back to the the non judgment part of that. You know, because. Mm -hmm that you say I am bad and if you haven't without ma mindfulness practice that can become that that thought can be very sticky and it can mm -hmm. become sort of a rolling snowball like you said then you judge you're continuing to judge that thought is bad or yourself is bad and you, you know can send you to this downward spiral and then you're right. out of the present moment as you said so it yes. yeah developing and it, a, a becomes, certain, and it becomes your story yeah. you know and and that's something that I really try and work with my clients about like what what are these stories that we tell ourselves and what are the stories that are serving us mm -hmm. and what are the stories that are holding us back because sometimes this habitual thoughts that come up for us are really not doing us any good um so it's just becoming aware of of what they are mm -hmm. right and that's the first step becoming aware yeah. <laughs> yeah, become well. You know, it's interesting. The, the, our, our adjective about the softness of mindfulness—that um, mm -hmm. adjective is really interesting to me because what happens is that even when I'm mindful, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. when something happens, I try not to like be hard. But yeah. sometimes it comes out hard. It's like, oh right. no! And sometimes when I know I'm gonna say, I'm saying, oh no! I gotta now I gotta do this. Yes. Not, and I and I'm <laughs> because I I know how like I I try not. And it's you know it's like okay, I I gotta well I gotta smooth the edges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly it, you know. And if you can learn how to soften the edges for yourself, then automatically the people around you are gonna learn how to soften their edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's something, you know, that I was going to bring up tonight is the idea of mindfulness and parenting. I mean, the most important thing that you can do as a parent, if you want to incorporate some mindfulness into your children's lives, is by modeling that behavior. Yeah. So, right. I mean, simply by, you know, embodying a mindful response. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when my daughter is stomping her legs and saying that she wants me to fix her hair, I sometimes react poorly, <laughs> and I snap, and that happens. And there's the self-awareness part, though. And how old is yes. your daughter? My daughter is four. Four. And, adorable. and she's okay. wonderful and very lovely, and she likes her hair to be in a certain style. Sure. <laughs> And I find myself having to do that style. Does, often does she like the putting day. an orchid in it? <laughs> I like her mommy. Flowers in her hair. <laughs> yeah, it's a little waterfall, she calls it. Okay. And, um, you know, so if I'm in the middle of doing something, if I'm writing, if I'm fixing dinner, and, sure. you know, there's that prodding going on, at moments I react mm -hmm. and. That happens, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But if I can model the behavior of stopping and not saying a word and just taking a deep breath and kind of gathering myself, and so taking that moment to pause mm -hmm. before I react. It's not going to happen all the time, but if it happens one out of every ten times, that's better than nothing. Yes. And like any kind of practice, over time, you become better at it. Yes. So... You know, it's the idea of just responding consciously and not reacting off the handle unconsciously. Very good point. And some. Sometimes our, our children will even point out that if they if we want them to behave a certain way, then we have to also quote right. quote end quote. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you find do you find a difference in any aspect of the the correlation between your children and yourself and your children and your husband and their, their correlation going back and forth? As far as a and mindfulness, mindfulness and exactly what we're talking about, meaning that you you brought up the aspect that okay, you're in the middle of something and. Your daughter's asking you to do something, and whether it's five out of ten times or one out of ten times right. response versus, and the reason, the reason I'm asking specifically is, uh -huh. you know, I've seen a lot of kids grow up and we have a huge family, and, mm -hmm. and I got lucky. Somehow I got lucky, okay? Uh -huh. But I'm thinking, did I get lucky really because I just <laughs> said to my kids, hey, that's it, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and, and so and I'm just curious, do you know what I mean, in the aspect 
of children sort of mirroring. Yeah, well, you know, it's of, um, of yeah, of hold it. There's, you know, there's there's this a, there's a certain or or is it you know. 20 years later also and then there's always just the one and one and one i'm not sure patterns. that's why that's why i'm asking more than anything uh, right well you know i'm fortunate in the sense that my husband and i have kind of taken this path of you know trying to be mindful together sure right and um you know a quick story if we have time oh yeah we'll have time well, actually we're going to come to a break and Lindsay, we'll come right back so stay there and folks stay okay, with us perfect. we'll be right back thanks You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Life is a mystery to be lived, not a problem to be solved. Mindful Living with Ellie Ford and Tom O'Brien. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before. No, no, I get a good feeling, yeah. Welcome back to Mindful Living, everybody. We're here with Lindsay Baumstein, life coach and mindfulness practitioner and teacher, who's sharing some tips with us on how to incorporate and introduce your children to the healing beneficial practices of mindfulness. So, Lindsay, share with us your story. Well, I was going to give you a quick example, and this is a story I had told in my blog a while back, but kind of a quick um, example of how mindfulness is important for parents to embody. Um, when my son was younger, he's seven now, so this was maybe when he was about two, he was having a really tough time going to sleep at night. And my husband and I were trying everything and we were exhausted. So, and just, you know, we felt disappointed and frustrated in ourselves and it just wasn't good. So we decided to enroll in a mindfulness-based structure stress reduction mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. um, which was an eight-week course uh, taught by a woman in Tampa, mm -hmm. and it was incredibly beneficial because we learned some of these mindfulness practices and, and how to meditate, mm -hmm. some of the basics. And so my husband and I, we started meditating nightly, and we started with just, you know, maybe a five to ten minute meditation. We moved up to about 20 minutes a night eventually. That took some time. Mm -hmm. And we would sit in front of my son's bedroom so he could see us. Mm -hmm. And we would just sit there and breathe. Mm -hmm. And what started happening was the complete energy of the situation changed. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we weren't trying so hard to fix everything. We were 
kind of surrendering to what was going on Mm -hmm. and letting it go, letting our expectations go. Um, We were trying to identify, you know, what our son needed from us Mm -hmm. instead of, you know, just the behavior. We're trying to look at what was underneath the behavior. Mm -hmm. And just by sitting in that peaceful presence, he started to fall asleep. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's so cool. It's beautiful. It was was really cool. That is. I have to tell you, my teacher in India, Lindsay, my Sanskrit teacher, said, if you want to improve the space you're in, meditate in it. Yeah. And it talks to, you know, to that energy you just said, that energetic connection. He felt maybe the calming. And, and again, it makes so yeah. much sense that you guys were less reactive and that can stoke the flames, right, when we're re- right. reacting to the child. Wow. Right. I mean, and then we were like, you know, we had the whole night ahead of us. We were like, what do we do with ourselves now? <laughs> 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 we don't have to fight this battle anymore. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of an example of how sometimes it's, you know, kind of shifting your perspective and looking at what's going on in you and not just your child. Yeah. That's really unique what you did too, which is really cool. It's a great story, great example. Yeah. What are are some other ways that you like to practice mindfulness with the children? Um, You know, ideally they say that with a mindfulness practice that you're, you know, incorporating some kind of mindfulness into your daily life every day, Mm -hmm. which starts to happen, I think, naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, But we have implemented a mindful Monday Mm -hmm. in my house. And so what we're doing is just taking about five to ten minutes before bedtime Mm -hmm. and having a few moments to practice a little seated meditation and you know my children are four and seven so sitting for a long period of time is is not going to work for them and frankly it's hard for me too right so um it's just a little bit of an experience getting them familiar with that space of silence and stillness Mm -hmm. um getting to know their inner landscape a little bit more so you know, on this past Monday when we did it, um, we'd had kind of an exhausting day and we didn't actually meditate, but we talked about our feelings. Mm -hmm. So it was right before bed and we just kind of went around and we named different emotions and different feelings and um, what makes us feel good, what makes us feel angry, what makes us feel sad, you know, kind of the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, incorporating that, you know, no judgment, not going to criticize this is just you know an open place to explore what these feelings feel like right um and you know it's just a a mindfulness meditation for kids can can look like you talking them through it so Mm -hmm. okay we're just going to sit and close our eyes for a few minutes and notice our seat on the ground or you know our seat on our bed and how does that feel and um you know inhale to the count of four and exhale through your mouth to the count of four and make, you know, the sound, ah, when you exhale and, and just that inhale and the exhale and going back and forth with that mm-hmm. and doing it, you know, just for a few minutes, will get them into this kind of rhythm mm-hmm. um, and understanding the breath. Allie, as you know, as a yoga teacher, how important that breath awareness is. So that's right. definitely a component. Right. Um, so yeah, like you know, that's that's an idea. Incorporating maybe one day a week where you're trying to introduce a little seated meditation or a little bit of breath work. I have to comment too on discussing your feelings. I think that is so important with children because so many times a child cries, oh, don't cry, or you know, a yeah. child's angry, oh, don't be mad. Yeah. Uh, to talk about it's okay to have emotions, and then yeah. when you become aware of those emotions you can choose how to respond to them, right? Or, you know, you can be angry without slamming the door or kicking the couch, you know, or raising your voice. Right. There's nothing wrong with anger. There's nothing wrong with being sad or mad. And, you know, it's, I grew up as a very sensitive child and I felt like there was something wrong with me because I cried really easily. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, was told by teachers, oh, you're so sensitive, you're so sensitive. And it's taken me a long time to realize that that's a gift. Right. And, it's okay to be sensitive. So it's really important that emotional intelligence piece yes, yes. is a really important part of mindfulness. Yes. You know what's so cool? And, and, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people and we've talked about meditation a lot and mindfulness a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the exercise that you just gave would be great for anyone. Anyone. For yeah. a husband and wife, for, for friends, yeah. for anyone. It's like yeah. really so cool because instead of just meditating, 
you are meditating, but you're meditating in the aspect and you have a real conversation. Yeah. And yeah. it's a safe conversation. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, you know, the, the layup there. So that is yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it seems that that is an exercise and a practice as the practice, yes. right? That right. can get you a lot farther and a lot tighter, very quick with anyone you're with. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom, I'm glad you bring that up because mindfulness does not mean, you know, a seated meditation. Right. It, right. That can be part of mindfulness. That can be a practice included in under that mindfulness umbrella. Sure. But yeah, having a mindful conversation with someone where you practice listening with your whole heart. Right. And just being present and like I said before, you know, seeing your child, seeing their beautiful spirit and knowing that their behavior is not who they are, that underneath that behavior there's something else going on. You know, they're asking for something and oftentimes it's, you know, a hug. It's that they want us to, to stop and they want to have our presence. They want us to put our cell phones away, which I am guilty of this. You know, often I'll catch myself texting while I'm talking to my children. Yes. Well, that will just be the opposite another few years from now. Yeah, but. <laughs> so it's, you know, I mean, and that's, that's another practice. So if you're doing, you know, trying yes. to incorporate like a little seated meditation, talking about your feelings, just how is, you know, I, at dinner, how was your day today? You know, one great thing that happened today, right. one not so great thing that happened today. Yeah. Um, and just encouraging those kinds of conversations is, is really, really beneficial. Beautiful. Such useful information. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm digging it because the, the, the aspect of an exercise in order to get where we all want to get to is... It just resonates with me. It, yeah. it, it yeah. just it just really works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's you nice try to, to have... we we say that you know we try to be mindful, and it's like you know I'm driving down the street and I miss. I mean, I I call my GPS Eileen because I lean on her all the time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. Oh, it's wicked. It's, it's it's great. I then thank God for her. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's true. I mean, being present, and, and that's going back to the ultimate state of mind that we're trying to cultivate, and that is one that, as you said, is, you know, present and fully awake to each moment, and it, whether that's driving and mm -hmm. just being fully present for that experience or a conversation with your husband or child. Mm -hmm. you know, there are many ways, and I love that you brought up that mindfulness doesn't necessarily have to mean meditation because, yeah. you know, for different reasons, there are some mis- understandings about meditation uh, uh -huh. and, you know in some in some uh, crowds and then uh -huh. other people have tried it and just say it's not for them so right. I think it's good to, to clarify that mindfulness doesn't necessarily mean meditation that's a it practice doesn't. yeah it's a practice exactly and bringing that you know awareness of doing whatever it is you're doing with a hundred percent awareness and attention so Thich Nhat Han is a Vietnamese um, Zen monk, and he writes so beautifully on the art of mindfulness. And, you know, he talks about when you're doing the dishes, do the dishes. That can be your mindfulness practice. Right. So it's very efficient, too, for all of us in our busy lives. You yeah. Know, we can really incorporate it into anything that we're doing. Yes. Which is pretty cool. It is very cool. You know, it helps kind of overcome the challenge of our multitasking culture. Yeah. And people think, oh, I can do it. I can multitask. But the, yeah. you technically cannot multitask. And you're yeah. much, you become much more effective at whatever it is you're doing if you pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Focus. Absolutely. And, you know, there are some great children's books. Um, I recently got one called um, A Boy and a Bear. And a friend of mine had recommended it. And it goes through that breathing practice that we just did. The inhale and the exhale. Ah. Okay. And it's a really accessible, sweet story. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, you can just do a Google search for children and mindfulness. And there's a ton of wonderful books out there. Because um, I find that can be a nice thing, too, to do with your kids, to read about uh, spiritual practices, mindfulness, and it's, you know, nice for them to have pictures to look at and that kind of thing. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah, it's huge. There's, there's no doubt. You know, when you talk the, when you're talking with the children about the spiritual practice, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me how you do that. Well, you know, for me, it's um, kind of introducing a vocabulary. Yes. Um, and one way that I do that, and I 
think I mentioned this in um, the blog post, Allie, that you had talked about, um, is I have a little deck of angel cards. Nice. And and you can make your own, and you just you know rain down on a little piece of paper, and you can um, color it, do pictures, whatever you like. But writing words like compassion, um, kindness, authenticity, um, you know, stillness, whatever it may be, and have your children pick a card a day. Yes, and that's that's a really nice way to start the day. In fact, I need to get back in the practice of doing this because we have not been doing this um, this summer. But, you know, just picking a card and then, you know, they might need help reading it or you can have a conversation. Well, what does being authentic mean? Sure. Um, you know, being real, being honest with your feelings, knowing that it's okay to make mistakes and that we're human beings and we, we learn from our mistakes. There's nothing wrong with that. We have to make mistakes in order to succeed. Um, See, this so should be taught in school. See, that, that and that Right there, what you're talking about. That would seem to me that's a non denominational, it is. Yeah. core, beautiful, spiritual soul and body. Helpful, right? Helpful, helpful you know? yeah. life lesson. And they, yeah. there are organizations who offer mindfulness in schools. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's so important, though, bigger, because when you're young, bigger. you don't even know what some of that is, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. I mean, all these things we've talked about, that you know, the benefits of mindfulness uh, that would help, as you said, Lindsay, with emotional intelligence and how to manage your emotions and respond to or, uh, you know, avoid reacting to your classmates or just people in your life yes, more bullies. appropriately. Yeah, you know, exactly. Um, how to respond when, you know, this idea that we can learn as children that we can't control what other people say or do. So we can't control what's going on out there, but we can control a little bit what's going on in our lives and how we look at things and how we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I mean, to learn that as a kid is is really huge. Um, yeah, it took me 50 years. <laughs> yeah, that's a learning. Seriously, right? I know. Still learning. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I think, too, it's, it goes back to the fact that it sounds so simple. A lot of the things that we've talked about and these practices sound so accessible uh, yeah but you you know from the get-go reminded us that it is a practice and that's why yeah. it's helpful to take some sort of even if it's just for a, sh a few short minutes mm -hmm. mindfulness practice every single day mm -hmm. because our habits are deeply ingrained yeah and Tom and I were talking about that at the break you know when um, Tom asked you how being a good example as a parent and practicing mindfulness can affect our children. You know, some of us have really, really long learned habits of reacting when we're angry or raising yeah. our voice because that's just how it was in our in our household and that's what seemed normal. But it doesn't have to be right. that way. It doesn't. And you can, you know, walk away from a situation. I mean, that that is okay to do as a parent. I mean, we all are going to be pushed to our limits. Yeah. And it is absolutely fine to leave a screaming child for two minutes. Exactly. And go and gather yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so that you return to that child sanely. Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, again, like like everything they're seeing us do, they learn themselves. That's okay. That yeah. is okay. And it is a great, you know, mindfulness is just such an, a beneficial tool in managing stress and anxiety. Yeah. Um, you know, those anxious thoughts that come up when we start thinking about the future and, oh my gosh, what are we, we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And, you know, coming back to the present moment or when we go into the past and, you know, thinking about the past sometimes can make us feel sad or nostalgic or full of regret. And, you know, so we, again, just notice that and then come back to the present. It's just that constant, you know, hearing it, I get it, I hear you, mm -hmm. and I'm going to come back to this moment and pay attention to where we are in this precious moment together. You know, that lesson there, I'd say, is one of the biggest ones. Because, uh, Allie, I, I know that you took many classes with Allie. And mm -hmm. you all, I remember when... Back in the day, Lindsay, let's yeah. not age oh, ourselves. I miss yeah. you, Allie. I know. I, know. <laughs> I miss you so much. <laughs> Um, but I remember you saying many times, you know, and I remember saying, oh, man, that's so hard to do, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It is. But it's beautiful. Yeah. It's where it's at. Yeah. It's, it's totally where it's at. It's like, you know, you can put it through your head, but then let it go. It's like, man, yeah, you want to let it go. You know what I mean? But some, yeah. some things, of course, you want to let go, and then they just keep coming. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, but, yeah, and it's just a glimpse. You know, it's like if you just, 
And that's the thing that's cool. It's like, oh, even if it's just a tiny little practice in awareness, that's going to expand. It's going to naturally expand. So it's like just knowing that in that little glimpse of, of hope that you, you will get there. And, yeah, no, you know, and it does journey, expand because I can do it yeah. now. I mean, I, you know, and I couldn't do it three or four years yeah, ago. I yeah. can do it now. So, yeah. so yeah. it's still there, but I can do it. So it's, it's, yeah. it's awesome because sometimes I just laugh now. I says, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, one other um, tip that I, I love to do with anyone um, is a form of gratitude practice. Yes. Um, and I used to do this as a kid's yoga teacher. We would have a gratitude ball, and we would bounce the ball back and forth to each other and make it a game and take turns saying what we're grateful for. But there are all these cool studies right now that are showing just the practice of stating what you are grateful for every day boosts your happiness yes. immensely. Yes. And so with kids, you can do it a few different ways. You know, if they're older, they can keep a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, write down one thing every day that they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, again, before bed or around the dinner table or in the morning, just take a moment and say, what are you thankful for? What, what are you grateful for? Yeah. Um, we have a little jar uh, in our kitchen. I happen to be the only one <laughs> puts anything in the jar, but I think everyone's <laughs> going to get better about that they're, eventually. They're seeing your example, Lindsay. Don't exactly. worry. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. But we have a little gratitude jar, and we, you know, my daughter's, uh, she has colored some pretty pictures and put it in there. And so eventually when it fills up, you know, we'll read We'll read them and then we'll start over again. So you can uh, put so notes, pictures, whatever you want, right? Yeah, anything yeah, you're grateful for. Oh, that's exactly. a good one. It's great okay. practice. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a way of getting, you know, getting that gratitude. My God, when you realize how how much we have. I mean, talk about being able to reframe your experience and, and kind of shift your perspective a little bit. There's nothing like a practice of gratitude. Well, you know what's so cool yeah. about that is that we have a garbage can to throw all the garbage in. So now this is a can to throw all the great stuff in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> we should, they should have more practice. of those. I know. <laughs> Lindsay, I have to tell you, just this conversation alone has inspired me to go home after this show and practice more mindfulness with my children tonight. We'll be doing the gratitude jar, and yeah. I'll be taking that moment to just look into their eyes and tell them how much I love them. And yes. we'll try some breathing practices tonight before sleep. And just thank you so much for sharing such helpful tips. And for our listeners, folks, I want you to remember to go to Lindsay's blog. It's sitandsmile.com. Or you can visit her Facebook page, which is Lindsay Baumstein, M.A., Life Coach. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Allie and Tom. This was great. I really enjoyed it. Thank Thanks you so, so much, helpful. Lindsay. Much love to awesome. you. Hopefully Wonderful. see you soon. Yes, please. Take care. You too. Okay, bye, 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 Lindsay. Bye-bye. Okay, very helpful. I love Huge. it. Huge. And it's Huge. helpful for everyone, they, right? There's no doubt. So the immense benefits, mindfulness for training, emotional and psychological benefits, increased patience, right. you know, less drama, less sensitivity to frustration. That job. We need that it's job. It's unending. The gratitude job, baby. I'm starting. I mean, we do I'm it. I'm getting one tonight. I'm grateful for you. And you also. And for our listeners, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next Namaste, week. Namaste, folks. Namaste. Have a great one.